Hi, we are going to see about FP growth algorithm. We have seen about a priori algorithm in the previous uh, video. As we have seen about the a priori algorithm, it has its own advantage as well as the disadvantage. When we move on with the disadvantages, it has to generate large and huge number of candidate sets and then it repeatedly scans the database and checks a large set of uh, candidates by pattern matching because of that it takes large amount of uh, memory and it takes large amount of time because of all these things the efficiency of the a priori algorithm gets reduced so because of all these uh, disadvantages and limitations we are moving on with the fp growth algorithm so this FP growth algorithm, it is going to mine the frequent item set without candidate generation. So we will see how it works with an example. So you see you have the transactional database and they have given the minimum support as two. The first step is just as you have seen in your a priori algorithm, you have to list the items and you have to find out the counts. So I have listed the items from I1 to I5 and counts is nothing but in how many transactions that particular item occurs so i have given the counts for all the items once that is done the second step is i need to sort this particular items in the descending order that is from large to small so when i do this my i2 comes first then my i i1 i3 i4 and i5 so my second step is over once the second step is over I'm moving on uh, to the third step. Here I'm going to construct the FP tree. So whenever we construct a tree, we need the root node. So when we construct the tree in FP growth algorithm, the root node will be null. Okay, the root node will be null. Your FP growth tree starts with a null node. Okay, that will be your root node. So I'm taking null as my root node. And... I am just going on with my first transaction. So in my first transaction, I have I1, I2, I5 items. So I need to arrange these items in the descending order depending upon the counts. So uh, you have the descending order counts and the items. So I am just going to arrange it according to this. So your I2 comes first, then your I1, then your I5. Now you have to construct the tree. Okay, so after null, it starts with I2 then i1 then i5 okay so put the count as 1 here it is 1 here it is 1 okay and then i am moving on with my second transaction that is i2 i4 it is already ordered okay so i2 occurs for the second time and i1 for the first time and then i2 i3 it is already ordered so i2 <clears throat> is already there and then I am putting I3 1 count as 1 and then I1 I2 I4 so if you see you have to arrange it in the descending order here in your fourth transaction so I2 I1 I4 so I2 so it is uh, plus 1 I2 then I1 plus 1 then I4 that is for the first time it is occurring in this particular route and then fifth transaction is i1 i3 it is already ordered so i1 i3 is there so i1 i3 um, we can't take this one because it is coming from i2 so i am just going to take it from null so i1 occurs once and i3 occurs once and then i2 i3 it is also already ordered I2 to I3 already you have a path plus 1 here it is plus 1 and then my seventh one I1 I3 I1 I3 it is also already ordered I1 I3 is there here it is there plus 1 plus 1 then I1 I2 I3 I5 you have to arrange it in the descending order so your I2 comes first I1 I3 and then I5 okay i2 i1 i3 i5 so plus 1 plus 1 so here it is 1 here it is 1 okay and then last transaction i1 i2 i3 once again arrange it in descending order then it will be i2 i1 i3 i2 i1 
i3 see i2 i1 i3 so plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 okay you have to uh, check it out whether your uh, uh, tree which you have drawn is correct so how you can check it is um, you have to add these counts and uh, see whether you are getting this particular count so for i2 i will add it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so it is coming so your i2 is correct so i1 1 2 3 4 here it is 4 and here it is 2 so altogether it is 6 it is done and then your i3 here it is 2 here it is 2 here it is 2 altogether it is 6 so this is done your i4 here it is 1 here it is 1 it is 2 it is also done and your i5 here 1 here 1 altogether it is 2 so altogether your tree is done okay it is perfectly done so once this is over we are moving on with the fourth step here in case of the fourth step i am just going to construct a table okay to find out the frequent patterns or frequent item sets okay the fourth step is i am just going to find out the conditional base pattern okay so whenever we move on uh, drawing this particular uh, tabular column before uh, starting with it you have to uh, uh, keep in mind two points one is you have to start from the node which has the minimum support value that is i5 is having the minimum support value that is 2 okay and the second point is you have to exclude the node which is having the maximum count value maximum support count value that is in the sense your i2 won't be included because it is having the maximum count of 7 okay these two points you should have it in your mind okay so now we move on with this uh, particular uh, uh, table so i am uh, uh, having some four columns first one is items then conditional pattern base conditional fp3 and frequent pattern generated okay so i am just listing down the items in which order from small to big okay you have to exclude which one i2 so i5 i4 i3 i1 these items i have listed and then i am moving on with my conditional pattern base for my item i5 so for uh, writing this one you have to have the tree with you okay this is the tree which you have right we have constructed earlier okay i am going to find out for, uh, for reaching i5 how many roots are there okay so if you see you have i2 i4 to i5 and i2 i4 i3 to i5 so you have two paths so i am just mentioning that that is i2 i1 that reaches i5 with the count of 1 and then i2 i4 sorry i2 i1 i3 that reaches i5 with the count of 1 so you have two parts that i have mentioned here same way for i4 i am seeing for i4 how many parts you have for i4 <coughs> i2 to i4 you have i2 i1 to i4 you have so two parts you have so i am mentioning that i2 to i4 i2 to i4 with the count of 1 and then i2 i1 to i4 with the count of 1 okay so your i4 is also done and then i am moving on with my i3 okay so i3 if you see i2 i1 i3 then i2 to i3 then i1 to i3 so if you see i am having two um, two parts that belongs to the same subtree okay and then i have another path that belongs to another subtree so if you see i am having a path from i2 to i3 with the count of 2 and then i2 i1 to i3 with the count of 2 these two are coming from the same tree okay same subtree okay and then you have i1 to i3 with the count of 2 that is coming from the another subtree okay this is from another subtree these two are from the same subtree okay so the next one i1 when i move on with i1 so i1 to i1 to 
i sorry i want to when we move on with uh, i1 from i1 i need to find out the path so for i1 to i2 you have uh, sorry so similarly for item i1 i am saying um, the path to reach i1 i am saying from i2 it reaches i1 with the count of 4 so i have written i2 to i1 with the count of 4 so this conditional pattern base is done right now so once this is done we are moving on with the next uh, uh, column that is conditional fp tree so when we come to this here if you see i am just taking this one and then i am seeing how many times i2 occurs here if you see i2 occurs in these two two times and then your i1 two times and then your i3 one time okay and then i am seeing which one is not having the minimum support as you know when we start this example you have the minimum support as two right so your i3 is not having the minimum support so i am eliminating this one and then i am moving on with this one so i2 two times then your i1 once so here also your i1 will be eliminated because it's not having the minimum support so here if you see i told these two are coming from the same subtree so i am just mentioning that with this angular braces okay so i2 it occurs twice here it occurs twice here so it is four then i1 it occurs twice and then your i1 from another subtree it is also occurring twice so everything is having the minimum support count so nothing to eliminate here then your i2 is having the count of four so nothing to eliminate here also okay so this is done your conditional fp tree is done the next part is frequent pattern generation so i am just having these conditional fps i am just going to combine it with my items which i have so when i combine and write it you will be having i2 i5 with the count of 2 i1 i5 with the count of 2 and you can combine all these three together i1 i2 i1 i5 with the count of 2 okay so uh, for example um, if you have different counts maybe if you have 2 here and 4 here and if you have a doubt of taking which value then you have to take the minimum value from that for example when i am going from a to c uh, from a to c it takes two when i go from a b to c it takes four okay anyways my destination is c so in this i will take the uh, one which is giving me the minimum value just like that you have to take here also okay so when i come to this point okay so this is done and i'm moving on with my i4 so i'm just going to combine with i4 okay i2 i4 with the count of 2 and then when i come to this one take the first one this one okay i2 and combine with i3 it is having the value of 4 then i1 comma i3 okay so with the value of 4 and then i2 i1 i3 with the value of 2 okay the same concept which i have told you right now okay and then i2 to i1 with the count of 4 so this is a, these are all the frequent patterns which we have generated so this is how your fp growth uh, algorithm works so because we are uh, constructing a tree it uh, it is not going to uh, scan huge uh, or large data base or uh, it is not going to uh, um, generate a huge number of candidate sets because of all these things uh, fp growth algorithm is far more efficient when compared to the a priori algorithm just see to it thank you